Hey there, greetings everybody. Welcome to another edition of What's Hot with Sea Tranquility. I'm your host, Pete Pardo, publisher and CEO of SOT. Today is Thursday, September the 13th. We've got a uh, kind of a short show today. We've got some notable new things that have come out recently that I want to make sure you know about in the genres of heavy metal, hard rock, progressive rock, jazz fusion. You know we do it all, right? So we're going to start off the brand new release from... I guess I call them kind of art rock. They're kind of pop, kind of prog, kind of, I guess the kind of mixing of the two is often called art rock. These guys have been around for a long time. I'm talking about Britain's The Pineapple Thief. Disillusion is their brand new one. Okay. If you've been following The Pineapple Thief for a while, you know this is kind of like the musical creation of Bruce Sword, multi-instrumentalist and vocalist. And he's got Gavin Harrison on drums on here. Of course, you know him from his time with Porcupine Tree and King Crimson, an integral new part of the band here, and just great songs. I, you know, I've been kind of hit or miss with The Pineapple Thief over the years. They've got some really, really good albums that are just so catchy. Uh, some little lightweight, uh, some of their early stuff is a little more in the progressive rock realm. They kind of do a little bit of that thing, but in their essence, they were just a very, very good, like, modern pop rock rock band who incorporate all, obviously elements of prog so but this album just some great songs the first time you play this you'll be like wow that's damn catchy and that's kind of very ethereal and that's you know there's nothing overly overly rocking on here but then again there's nothing that's overly like lightweight but the great you know the the drums are off the charts great keyboard layers and guitar textures and the vocals multi-track vocals just really really good dreamy prog pop art rock whatever the hell you want to call it a quality release just tunes that just beg you to come back for more and more and that's that's you know that's the characteristics of a great album right guys i mean just an album that makes you want to go back and listen to it over and over again where the songs just kind of pull you in grasp you by the throat and pull you in don't want to let go that's kind of what you get with this a very very good album by the pineapple thief probably one of their best at least out of all the ones that i've heard um, a lot of strong albums, but this one just kind of clicked with me right off the bat. So check that out. Disillusion by the Pineapple Thief. Okay. Teutonic metal god Udo Dirk Schneider. Of course, <clears throat> ex of except, but he's had a um, solo career going on for a long, long time with some really, really solid material. Okay. Now, of course, the band is called Udo. Their new album for AFM Records is Steel Factory. That's it right there. A lot, lot of songs on this one. Fifteen, to, to be uh, to be truthful. There's the band. There's Mr. Udo. Little guy with the mighty voice. Uh, you know, if you like classic Accept, or if you like any of the stuff that Udo's been doing over the years, you're going to like this. Really super crunchy guitars, uh, anthemic choruses, and Udo's gravelly, you know, trollish voice, and, you know, Jackhammer rhythms. It's, it's just a typical Udo album. How can you not like this guy and the music he's created for the last like 35, 40, almost 40 years? So Steel Factory, another really, really good one to check out. I'm going to stay on FM Records for this next one from U.S. power metal band Hellion Prime. Uh, Terror in the Cybernetic Space Monster. Terror of the Cybernetic Space Monster. Excuse me. Got a little glare there. There we go. You can see that Big bad creature on the front. Kind of a ridiculous album cover, but, you know, kind of cool. Here's the guys in the band. They've got a brand new singer who does a fine job on here. Nothing you haven't really heard before on this album, but just very, extremely well-produced uh, album of, of classic power metal and great vocals, just thunderous rhythms. The, the guitar work, it, like, like I said, the production of this album is so good. It's one of the better albums you'll hear this year from a production standpoint. The, the guitars are super metallic and crunchy. The, the riffs are just memorable. The lead guitars are blazing. Like I said, the vocals are very melodic and high-pitched. Just really good stuff. Good songs. Good album. Are they recreating the wheel? Hell no. But if you like, you know, memorable, just... U.S. and European style power metal uh, with lots of hooks and great uh, musical passages. Can't not like that album. Can't not like it. All right. Veteran vocalist Graham Bonnet. Of course, you know him from Rainbow and the Michael Schenker group and Alcatraz and Impelitary and all sorts of other solo albums. Well, he, he's put together uh, the Graham Bonnet band uh, over the last couple of years. 
and hooked up with Frontiers Records. This is their second album with the label. It's called, meanwhile, Back in the Garage. Follows up their previous one by, I think, less than a year. So we've got, uh, geez, I would say about uh, 14 tunes on this one. So who's in the band, you might ask, right? Okay, well, uh, on the album, you've got Graham Bonin on vocals, Joey Tafola on guitars, you got Beth Amy uh, Revenstone, Revenstein, I forget how she's on bass. You've got Jimmy Waldo on keyboards, Jimmy formerly also with Graham and Alcatraz, also in New England. And then uh, Mark, oh boy, hold on, need the glasses for this one. I tell you, these, these booklets are microscopic. Uh, Mark Ronkiho, jeez, uh, I'm probably saying that wrong. It's hard to even see the damn, uh, let's see if there's somewhere else in here that's got it easier to read. Probably not. No, of course not. Yeah, Mark Bonkechea, something like that. Sorry, Mark, I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, but the label made it impossible to read it in this damn booklet. Um, Joey Tafola is actually, uh, you know, he does all the guitar work on the album, and a mighty fine job, I might add, but he's actually no longer in the band. So now the new guitar player, his name is uh, Kirk James, so he's the guy going forward. So how's the album, you might ask? Um, pretty damn good. If you like uh, that very early Alcatraz stuff when Ingwe was in the band, not too far removed. So this album's a little bit different than the previous studio album. Uh, Tafola does some really cool, like, neoclassical stuff on here. So again, you get that early Alcatraz feel. Just, Bonnet still sounds great. <laughs> what a great singer. The guy's like in his early 70s. And uh, a lot of good keyboards here. So this, of course, got that rainbow deep purple type feel in a lot of the tunes and with the, you know, neoclassical guitar. Really good stuff. And then uh, you also get a bonus DVD which is the band's live performance at Daryl's house in Pauling, New York, just a few minutes from where I live here, uh, from earlier, they believe that was in early February. That's when the snowstorm was early February. Yeah. Uh, early February. I actually was, was supposed to go to that show. But we had a snowstorm that day, so I wound up not going, but, uh, they streamed it live. I believe the next night on Facebook and I was able to watch the whole show that I missed. And now the whole show is here on DVD. So really, really good performance from the band. So, uh, that's it for new stuff, right? So, we, of course, we go on to Forgotten Favorites, where I take a look at an album, a favorite of mine from either a long time ago or more recent years that just kind of gets overshadowed by other albums in that band or artist repertoire, or it could be a release that just never got any mention at all and remains toiled in the underground, but I like a lot, and it's one of my favorites. So this, uh, this one here is, I've been on a fusion kick lately, it's not a bad thing. It happens to me every so often. I love Jazz Fusion from the 70s. Um, this one happens to be the 1980 release from a band that I love quite a bit. It's one that they nobody ever seems to talk about, but I think it's a damn good one. It's uh, Weather Report's Night Passage. Okay. Uh, all sorts of glare. There we go. Again, from 1980. There's the guys in the band. Kind of gets overshadowed by their, you know, black market period, but I think this is quite a good one. So, of course, you know, you got Joe Zawinul on keyboards, Jocko Pastorius on bass, the great Jocko, the late Jocko, Wayne Shorter on saxophone, Peter Erskine on drums, and uh, who's the guy who's playing? They got a, like a percussionist on this album. What was his name? Robert Thomas Jr. Um, but more importantly, some great songs. Melodic is always, you know, the title track is great. Uh, Matt Gascar is one of their one of my favorite tunes from them. Uh, Three Views of a Secret is awesome. Rockin' and Rhythm, Fast City, Dream Clock, Port of Entry, and Forlorn. Just a really good top-to-bottom track list of Weather Report's brand of, you know, groove-laden, melodic jazz and jazz fusion um, and, and pop. Weather Report always added a lot of pop elements into their instrumental blend of jazz which I always really liked a lot. And it's virtue also, but the music just kind of really flowed. So one of the things I always liked about Weather Report, you know, as opposed to some of their contemporaries, like, you know, Return to Forever, Mahavishnu Orchestra, Tony Williams' Lifetime, Brand X, who really went nuts, you know, with crazy guitar work and just blazing uh, instrumental interplay. These guys did that as well, but these guys took a little more melodic route, a little more kind of laid back route than those guys, less frenzied stuff and more just kind of lock in a groove and really go 
full tilt with the melodies, which I always really liked, made them different. So that's it. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on my YouTube multiple times per week lately, trying to bring you guys as much stuff as I possibly can fit in. So we've got all sorts of great stuff coming up, uh, which we've talked about ad nauseum. Uh, Judas Priest, History of, coming up next week. We've got the Ian... Uh, well, the Gillen Band, which is going to turn into an Ian Gillen uh, history of as well. Um, I'm cooking on, I'm working on a Gentle Giant history of. We've got uh, the Top Fusion albums of the 70s, which I'm hoping I'm going to do either tomorrow or early Saturday morning. And some rants, all sorts of other things. So stay tuned. Check out all the stuff in the library, guys. We've got tons of videos that you can go back and look at. All sorts of great stuff. Make sure also you don't miss... Our sister channel, Comic Book Geezers, which features myself and my buddy Wild Bill as we talk about all sorts of great classic silver and bronze bronze age comics from Marvel and DC Comics. We show them. we got big collections. So if you're into two older guys talking about comics from the old days, you're going to like this show. It's a lot of fun. So uh, until next time, take care. We'll see you real soon.